Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to the first episode of this new series of tutorial on how to learn and use Git from scratch. Welcome again. Before starting the technical part, I'm going to explain a little bit what I'm going to do and what you can expect during these videos on this new series of tutorial about Git. If you're interested in knowing what Git is, what's the logic behind and all the technical aspects, how it works and why it works like this, this series is not the place for you. <laughs> My series is going to be focused mostly on the technical aspect, like the practical aspect on how you can use Git on your daily workflow and what you should use to have a better workflow, a better version control of your code, and how to code collaborate with other developers around the world by using Git. So if you don't really know what Git is, is or you have no idea why you should use Git, this is not the best place for you. I strongly suggest you to go on the Wikipedia page of Git or the official website of Git and read the documentation of the about and the history about Git, how it was created and why you should use it. But let's get started. First of all, in order to use Git, you need the terminal or the PowerShell and you also need Git installed as a package in your operating system. By default, Apple computers, so Mac OS X operating system and Linux based operating system come with Git pre-installed. Windows unfortunately doesn't come with Git pre-installed and Windows has a sort of a separated version of Git is not the same exactly that we have on OS X or Linux. But let's take a look and let's check if we actually have Git installed in our operating system. Let's open a terminal or a command line and let's type git dash dash version. And here we should have our answer where we have what kind of version installed in our system and what kind of type of version. In my case is the default Apple Git version 63 that comes with the operating system and my version is the 2.6.4. If you don't have any Git version or Git install, you should get a message like Git command. This command G-I-T is not found. To install Git, you have to go on the official Git website that is exactly Git dash scm.com access this website and download the package relative to your operating system you can download of course the windows build the source code if you want to build by yourself of course you have all the other versions if you access the download section you have the mac os windows linux and solaris version you can install git pretty much in every operating system i suggest you for now to not download the uh, user interface the gui clients to use git let's try to avoid to use source 3 github gui or git kraken or whatever other software to use git with a graphic interface in front of you it's it's always better to learn Git from the command line to understand exactly how Git works and how you can control Git really from uh, the ground point, from the basic. And then if you feel comfortable with the command line, you can totally switch with uh, a software, an app or a graphic user interface in order to use Git. But before, always start with Git. After you install the Git package in your operating system, it's time to configure a bunch of things before starting using Git. So first, let's check if you have any configuration in your current system and to see if you have anything configured, just write git config dash dash list. This command will list all the configuration that you have in your operating system. Right now, all my credentials are handled by OSX Keychain, that is the uh, system, the app that controls all the credential, login name, identifications ID, and all this kind of stuff in OSX. If you have Linux or if you have Windows, most likely you're gonna have something different. Most likely, if you just installed fresh Git, you won't have 
anything here. So let's configure something, especially the basic things that you need in order to have a proper uh, Git environment. First, let's configure the two most important values. There are your username and your email address. These two values are necessary to identify your commits, your Git push, your code that get pushed to a specific repo in order to be traceable and to be recognizable by other users or other developers that they work on the same repo. So first let's write git config to say to git I want to config something particular. Let's use the global settings, so dash dash global, and we're saying that with this dash dash global we are going to write this variable globally and not just for a specific repo. And now let's specify the variable user.name. So we are accessing the group user and inside we're accessing the single value name. Let's leave it a space and double quote, let's specify your username. In my case, it's Alicad with 3D of course. Perfect. Now let's configure also our email because it's a really important value to be traceable when we commit something to a Git repository. So let's do the same method. Git config dash dash global space user to access the user group and then email space, no double quotes, no single quote, and insert your email. And of course my email is protected because I don't want to show it to anyone, even if it's easily <laughs> trackable and easy findable, but press enter. We don't have any answer or any confirmation error. We are going to have an error, of course, if we type something wrong. If we don't have any confirm or any um, alert, it means that we did everything correctly. To check what we did, let's again call the list. And if you never use the terminal, if you have to write a command that you already wrote in these in the same terminal window, you can use the up and down arrow on your keyboard to navigate the previous command. So I'm typing, I'm pushing, I'm pressing the arrow up on my keyboard. And as you can see, I have the full list of all the command that I just typed. So I go back to the config list. And if I type now I have the push default, it's simple, I have the username set to Alicad and the user email set to my personal email. So every time now that I have these settings and I commit or I push some code specific to a repo, my code will be packaged with these two other values. So the user, another developer or the owner of the repo will know exactly who I am and how to contact me in case my code is super crappy. Anyway, we use the global config, so we have to set up this stuff only once. You can also do it repo by repo. If you have different repository, you're working on different clients, on different folders, on different repository, and probably in one folder you don't want to use your nickname, but you want to use your full name, you can change this value if you're inside a specific folder by just removing the global settings. So instead of username allocate with the global, you can just remove the global. And if you type this command inside a specific folder, only that folder will have these settings, this specific name, email, or whatever other settings you want to configure. If you're in a specific folder and you want to check which username is associated to that specific folder or whatever other value, you can just simply call the value that you want to print. So in my case, I want to check if my username is set up properly. I want to write, I can write git config space user dot name and I'm gonna have printed my username, the username that I specified globally or locally in case I'm inside a specific folder. And this is the key that you're calling. This key you can uh, use whatever other key. You can use user dot email, you can change the editor and all these other things. But these stuff are slightly more advanced and are not absolutely necessary in order to use Git username and email are really necessary in order to be more traceable and, and using it in a proper way. During the series of these tutorials, we're gonna use a lot of Git commands and really specific key values that most likely you're gonna forget and it's hard to remember. So anytime you don't remember something or you don't really remember what kind, what type of command you could use, I always suggest you always type git 
help and a git help will list basically all the command that you can use from the get-go from the beginning and if you don't remember a specific command for example if I don't remember how to use the config value I can write more directly git help and then the command or the verb that I wanna that I need help to so in my case it's config because I don't remember how it works and git will access the manual for you for that specific verb for that specific command that you specify and you will have the description and all the list of synopsis and all the list of command that you could use with a specific method so this is really helpful to exit the manual page or whatever are the listing that git is doing just type the letter q and the page will quit and you will be uh, reverted to the initial status of your terminal don't get stressed or don't be afraid that you're stuck inside a specific session just hit q and everything will revert at the initial status well that's pretty much it for today i hope you enjoyed if you did please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and if you want you can spend a couple of minutes to check the support me page on my website and take a look on all the different ways and methods that you can use to support me support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you thank you again guys and until the next lesson as usual happy coding